you guys told me to check out this innocent little cooking game where I'm gonna have a lot of fun. You wanna know something funny? I don't believe you. This is a game y'all were begging me to play. You said it's kinda like DDLC and the fact that they get inside your mind. Take my hand. Leave a comment and a like down below. I switched it up a little bit. I know, that's weird, but... No, 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 Gregor says that walk was brutal, but this cabin is amazing. Full kitchen, running water, it really has everything. Man, it's been a while since we sat here and we read shit. Anatoly and Natalie. And at finally a place I can read a good book in peace. I can't wait to ta- Ah! Mariah, are you good? We're like one second into the game. Achoo! Bless you. I'm sorry, everyone. It must be the dust. Get those allergies under control, Mariah. Karen? Karen? Karen. Hi, Karen. Don't worry, guys. I'm sure with a little elbow grease, we can make this cabin shine. So are you volunteering to clean, Gregor? No. <laughs> Fuck you, dude. Not many supplies here. Guess we'll have to go out and get what we need. There's a fireplace for making stew, so let's gather up some firewood, okay? Leave that to me, little guy. I'll tidy up around the cabin. Need to save Mariah from dying due to this dust. <laughs> hey! Mariah, what? I'm trying to help you out. Allergies are nothing to joke about, Corinne. I'm not joking, and Natalie. She's not dead yet, Pipsqueak. Calm down. Thanks, and Natalie. I think I'll go foraging outside with over 450. M okay, bro. Yeah, we get it. There should be treasure outside. Roughing it is fun. And Natalie knows so much about edible foods. We're in good hands. I think the slime molds would be the most delicious. Almost certainly not. What about the fungi? Do you even know which ones are poisonous, Natalie? I, uh, I could figure that out. You can be the canary in the coal mine, Natalie. I'm not ending up a corpse here. Eek, keep both eyes open, little guy. Okay, Monty, we got it. Plenty of wolves and brown bears around. They won't be a problem. I fucking, I do not like this, Natalie, dude. I'm sorry, he just seems like a little asshole. I read up on 10 different techniques to incapacitate them. Number one is, Natalie! Finally, Mariah, what we were all thinking. Oh yeah, sorry, Mariah. Got carried away again, haha. -ha. I'll help Natalie look for food. I'm better off at warding off wild animals. If we come up empty-handed, we could always eat some of the food we brought. You mean the emergency rations? Don't be fucking stupid, Natalie. Bad idea, chump. Hey, Natalie and Mariah are getting the food. Gregor's gathering the firewood. That makes you our designated chef. Everyone's looking at me? Expectedly? I nod. I'm I'm not I'm not doing it. Very excited to try your cooking. Well Mariah, I'm excited to try cooking. Because I'm not very good at it. Alright everyone, let's get to work. Later. Mariah and Natalie Gregor The three exit the cabin, leaving you and Corinne alone. I think Natalie put the supplies in the kitchen. Thanks for helping out with the cooking. Tutorial, save the game, hit the escape button. Do you have any experience making meals? Um, <laughs> yeah, I make spaghetti. Is that so? Hmm, looking at you, I think you'd be good at serving up food poisoning. What? Hey, Corinne, why are you coming at me for no fucking reason, right? It looks like Corinne will remember that. Anyway, going to check out the living room. Let's talk later. Bye, Corinne. Bye. What the fuck does this, what? She'll remember what? Karen heads to the living room and starts dusting off a little bit. You decide to look around the kitchen to find the ingredients for the meal. Tutorial, you'll never know what may be around. Oh, 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 okay. So where should we look? The cupboards, the wood pile, or the drawers? I don't want to stick my damn hands down there. So we're going to go with the drawers. There's got to be some food in there. Drawers on the left, just some dirty knives. Okay, well, how about the fucking man? We'll go with the wood pile. Nothing but cobwebs? Just what I thought. Thankfully, no spiders. 
they moved out quick they saw we were moving in they didn't want to intrude uh we'll go with the cupboards the first few cupboards are empty and natalie must have put the supplies somewhere else the whole fucking kitchen Do we just got to keep checking the drawers oh something's making it difficult to open you pull it open with all your might oh hey cabbage, <laughs> hey, cabbage it's time Chompettes, sound off. Onion. Never fear, onion. Bread. Cor bread. Shut up. Potato. Potato, say something, man. Cabbage stuffed me into this drawer. I'm pretty sure this counts as kidnapping. Nothing to say? <laughs> Where are the Chompettes? Yay! <laughs> Why talk with those boring humans? All they have to give you is drama. Come chat with us instead. We'll share valuable recipes you can cook. We'll share our secret chompette recipe. Collect them all to become a five-star chef. All right, we got to celebrate. Here's your first recipe card. Roasted eggplant with sesame and pomegranate. Meat-free. Man, I like meat. You unlocked your first recipe. Yeah. If you ever want to talk, just come to the drawer. Chompettes, uh -huh. let's move out. All right, bye guys. Bye Chompettes, how sweet of them. Okay, Cabbage rudely slams the drawer closed. You wonder if what you just saw was real. Ah, uh, I'm gonna believe it. You're slightly worried about what this means for your mental state, but only slightly. Hey Karen. Did you find the supplies? You shake your head. And Natalie lied. He actually put them in the bedroom. Why would he put the food in the bedroom, idiot? Here you go. You got the emergency supplies. Okay, well, thank you for picking them up for me, Karen. You start a fire with some of the wood and get to work on cooking dinner. Tonight's entree, vegetable stew. In a large saucepan over medium heat, you heat some water with potatoes, carrots, and celery in it. 15 minutes later, you drain the pan. Damn, they're not even gonna let me cook. They're just doing it for me. Throw in some onions, let it cook. Onions are tender, translucent. Perfect. Are we stabbing some shit? What was that? You mixing some heavy cream, hours pass. We've been in here for hours. Hey guys. We're back. More, more firewood than you'll ever need. We found some wild sorrel. Maybe tomorrow we'll have a bigger bounty. And Natalie's bearing the lead. We saw a red deer. M -m -m Mariah spotted it. A red deer? I mean, that's cool, I guess. Yeah, that's great. Anyway, killed 17 spiders today while you were out looking at deer. You could have, I don't know, asked one of us for help, but she's gonna come and, you know, be all rude and shit for no reason. Yeah! She just likes to yell, I think. That should come as no surprise. There's over one. What uh, is with it? And Natalie wasting all of his fucking energy on random shit that nobody is ever gonna ask you, man. Oh, 160? Don't worry, Mariah. I'm sure they were all in the bathroom. <laughs> no. Almost all of them were near the couch. That's where I chill. Yeah! I was going to sleep on the couch. That's where 16 of them were. I'm not sleeping on that couch then. Hmm. And there's only two beds in the bedroom. Don't sweat it, Mariah. I can sleep anywhere, so I'll sleep in the rocking chair. What a nice man you are, Gregor. You're missing the why, but it's fine. I'll sleep with one eye open, just in case any of them swarm the couch. Thanks, Gregor. Corinne and Natalie, you two take the bedroom. They're gonna get it, it on inside uh, of the bedroom. A uh, Natalie and Corinne? Better not. I will. Mm -mm. The biggest threat in this game is me. <laughs> Thanks, big guy. Joke's on you, Gregor. I always plan on taking one of the beds. Hey, and Natalie, I snore louder than a lumber yard. Ugh. Sweet dreams, chump. You turn back to your bubbling vegetable stew and try a bite. Ah. This tastes pretty good. I didn't even get a... 
tastes like fucking shit. I'm sorry. They're gonna get so pissed. You cook vegetable stew. You set the table and ask everyone to dig in. All right, everybody. Dig in. Oh, wow. This smells delicious. Yeah, can y'all not all stare at me like that, please? Except for you. You can keep staring at me. But you, Anatoly? All right. Thank you. You must be a world-class chef. Corinne takes a bite. It's bland as hell. Eat it! I'm not like, this isn't, you're not having to pay for this food. It's all free. Go ahead and eat. If you want to go in the kitchen and put some fucking salt and pepper in it, go ahead. I, I already put them in though. Corinne tastes like every other vegetable stew I've ever had. So generic. Why are you winking at me? This isn't, your food tastes like shit. Nah, wink. Fucking bitch. Could probably use some meat. If you got any meat to give me, Gregor, I'll take it. <laughs> Not like that, Gregor. Stop right now, okay? This guy's looking at me weird. Gross. For a side dish, we could bake some bread and utilize the Fragaria Vesca strawberries and some jam. Shut up, bro. Nobody cares. Pip squeak. Finally, Corinne, me and you are on the same page. So stop being so mean to me about my cooking. Everyone laughs at Corinne's polite ribbing. <laughs> Nothing makes you happier than cooking a great meal for friends. This could very well be the best day you've ever had. Yo, my shit is boring as fuck. You go to bed stuffed. Okay. Well, I guess that was day zero. Day one now. Perfect. Let's see what today brings for us. I'm thinking uh, someone's gonna get pregnant. He's gonna give me some meat. Gregor, hey, you up? I'm standing right here. How'd you sleep? I was so warm last night. I didn't even need a blanket. Yeah, probably all the spiders crawling up and down your body, Gregor. Sorry about that. What time is it? About one hour until dawn. Damn, we're up early as hell. Someone sleep on the wrong side of the bed? Will you two pipe down? Trying to sleep over here. Oh boy. What's it? Why do you have a rat on top of your shoulder at all times? Can we talk about that? Are you sleeping with it? Gregor, the birds outside aren't making much noise yet. We didn't bring many supplies, remember? Better get a head start on gathering food. Yeah, go gather some fucking food, Gregor. You're the man here. I honestly, <laughs> like, I'm like not right here able to go gather some food. Nah. I honestly cannot see the trees outside right now. Gregor, did you see any spiders last night? There was a small one in the bathroom. Ah! Actually, I did see a centipede by the sink. Mariah turns a little pale. Karen's messing with you, Mariah. I don't think so, bro. Let's find more than wild sorrel today. Ah! If you're lucky, little guy, maybe I'll teach you how to catch some wild brown trout. What's with you and meat? Big guy. That's when you wink, okay? That's when you wink, Karen. A Natalie's herbalism book stated that there's many species of plants to eat out here. Let's leave the fish alone. You know, I'm not, uh, into meat. I could guess that, Mariah. That's a shame. You got some meat hidden for us, Karen? I'd wake up early to go fishing. Cheer up, Karen. We'll get to observe the trout at very least. Maybe we'll see more red deer today. That sounds like a waste of time, Gregor. Haha! <laughs> Maybe we'll find some blackthorn berries. I love black- Shut up. Hmm. Haha. <laughs> we'll be back later. Can you watch our stuff today? Oh, you say I get the whole house to myself? Sure, bye guys. Thank you. Thanks. Hmm. Don't steal anything, okay? Only try to steal your heart, Karen. Okay, goodbye. All four of you, whole house of myself. They all leave the cabin with a hop in their step. You're alone. But thankfully, you have a drawer of chompettes to keep you company. Each day, you'll be asked to explore a different part of the cabin. 
You only get one choice, then the day will end. So choose wisely. What do you want to check out today? I mean, we just talked to those little motherfuckers yesterday. So do we go in the basement early? Fuck it. Why not? This door goes into the... I was like, where'd the music go? This door goes into the basement. There's no reason to go in the basement right now. You wait for the others to return? Are you fucking kidding? That was my one choice today. Why does he look mad? We're back. Tee hee. Knock it off, Mariah. It's pretty rare to be scared of one. It's, it's not. What, what were you scared of, Gregor? Hee <laughs> Who knew the big guy would be so scared of? S sh shut up! Are you good, dude? You don't understand. I don't think anyone understands, Gregor. It was just a marmot, Gregor, not a monster. Mariah laughed so hard you could hear your ears ring. <laughs> Mariah! Some of us have sensitive ears. Tears are rolling down Mariah's cheek. What the fuck is so funny? She's laughing so hard she's about to hyperventilate. Stop Mariah from hyperventilating? Should I? I am I? I don't know. Absolutely not. One less mouth to feed, right? What? You don't get it. It's pretty personal. Then please explain, big guy. I, uh... Gregor looks incredibly uncomfortable. <laughs> let's leave him alone. We found some raspberries and elderberries. Oh shit, are we gonna make a pie? Quite the We also found more wild sorrel. Is this gonna be enough for a good meal? Everyone's looking at me. Man, fuck it, sure. Inventory? All right. There's cabbage rolls. Man, that sounds like the most... Like, if you thought that yesterday's vegetable stew was bad, get ready for my cabbage rolls, all of you. You're gonna be begging me for meat. We're cooking. Yep, we're mixing, we're cooking, we're boiling, we're reducing the heat, we're chilling! Jump scare. Yay, Mariah looks optimistic, Karen looks skeptical, and Natalie looks curious, and Gregor looks thrilled. This guy's just happy to eat. You watch intently as everyone takes a first bite. Okay. Oh gosh, dude. <laughs> Damn, Karen, you love this shit. That's pretty darn good. Wow, I could eat the whole batch myself. I think the bi The sauce is pretty rad. Did you use fresh tomatoes for it? It really adds to it. Oh, she said red. Spoon some of the liquid on top of it. You'll thank me later. Oh, incredible. It's definitely growing on me. Thanks again for cooking. This really was something special. Everyone leaves the dishes behind for me to do. I thought it was whoever cooks doesn't clean, but I guess here it's fucking backwards day for these motherfuckers. What? Why are we all dark? Not happening. You settle in and go to bed. Everyone goes to bed full. Tomorrow will be another great day. Day two. Day poo. Why do I say that every fucking time? All right, man. It doesn't make any sense to me either. I just say it. It's like an automatic thing. Good morning, everyone. Okay. Always angry as hell every morning. Again, Gregor? Can't you let us sleep in? Not today. Why? Storm clouds are gathering. We need to find some food. You're overreacting. We have enough food to last us a while. Enough food? Have you seen how big I am? He's right. The meal you made was delicious, but it used a lot of what we had. Gregor's also correct. Participation in the prison, usually high winds. Motherfucker, shut up. Go to the fucking weather station if you want to talk about shit like that. It'd be foolish to not go out and look for food today. You think it really will flood? Thankfully, the cabin's on high ground. But that doesn't mean we're safe from flood water. It's always a possibility. <laughs> You're losing it, Gregor. Corinne, there's nothing to worry about. I think Gregor's right, Corinne. Huh? It won't hurt to prepare. I think she's right, Corinne. Damn, we're all ganging up on Corinne. Fail to prepare, prepare to fail. And Natalie, 
Let's go out and prepare. Forwarding should be a priority today. Give me a few minutes and I'll plot out a route. Let me help, little guy. There they go. Hey, why do we have a picture of lightning in the living room? Like, it looks cool. I kind of want the print, but I'm just wondering why, you know? And Natalie and Gregor head to the bedroom to consult the map. Mm -mm. They're going to be consulting each other's private areas. What? That's all I'm going to say. I've got a little theory about a Natalie and Gregor. Mariah and Karen are still hanging around. Don't put me through that again. Unfortunately in life, you can't make any, everyone happy. When given a choice to speak to a character, you can only select one of them. Oh boy, try to max out your bond. Oh boy, well, we're gonna talk to Karen. There she is, hi Karen, hey. I'm sorry, but the other girl is just not that interesting. This paper nailed to the wall looks pretty ancient. What were the old days like? Um, extremely brutal. Oh, really? You'll have to share the details with me later. Whoa! Karen, okay. Karen will not be able to stomach your stories, but you still agree to tell her the details. Karen will definitely remember that. Well, that's a... Me and Karen, one out of five hearts we sharing. Don't care did that boat Baron? Did it heat the root Baron? A and a poop poop Karen and a beat and a soup root Baron. You hear a shout from the other room. What? Gregor and Natalie come back from their meeting. Gregor is blushing slightly. He uh uh. Hey, can you cook something while we're out? You nod. Thank you. All right, everyone. We have our route. Let's beat those clouds. What was he blushing for? They were going at it. I was not expecting. Well, I was. The group leaves, determined as ever. You have the cabin all to yourself. Hello? Um, what's that noise? Sounds like it's coming from the kitchen. Well, let's go to the kitchen. Huh, radio. What's going on with that radio? You didn't even notice it on the ground when you walked in. Did someone leave it here? It looks newer than anything you've seen before, but it seems to be broken. Better hold on to this. You got the strange radio. Before you cook dinner, what should you check out? Um, I wanna go in the basement again, man. You know what, screw it. We'll go see what the fuck is going on inside this damn- Alright, we got the Minecraft bed set up. We got a little mouse hole. Poor Natalie. Karen's snoring is so loud she even wakes you up sometimes. And Natalie must be running Who gives a fuck, honestly? Would he have the courage? Probably not. <laughs> you wait for the others to return. What the fuck was under that floorboard? Mariah's back early. Okay, I, they didn't let me look at that though. Hey, hey, Mariah. The others are still looking for food outside. And Natalie found some berries, but nothing that will feed all of us. Please don't tell the others, but I'm a little worried about our supplies. Oh, Mariah, come here. Mariah, sometimes in life, you just have to sit back and, and, and try not to worry. You know, because if, if we do run out of food and the supplies are dwindling and we're all getting really hungry. You're going to be the one who doesn't eat first. So I crunched the numbers and we don't have enough food, even with rationing to last if there's a big storm and we get stuck here. Mariah seems disappointed in your inventory management. Can you try cooking with a little less this evening? You nod. Thank you. You've done such a great job with meals so f Why does she look like that? With meals so far? You're... Very sweet. Is Mariah blushing a little? I sure fucking hope not. <laughs> I... Okay. Um... Let me put it like this. Guess what? I don't care. Maybe you can teach me to cook sometime? You nod. 
looking forward to it. Hey, you could hold cooking classes here someday. Rudely interrupting a tender moment, the others burst into the cabin. I don't think this shit was that tender, but whatever. Hi, Karen. Hey, bitch. Hey, guy. Don't be so down, everyone. We got tons of good berries. <sniffs> Jam is so bland without any sugar. Do you have any sugar? Karen, you know I do. You shake your head sadly. Just kidding. Yikes. Turn that frown upside down. I'm not smiling for you, Gregor. Eek, uh, you missed out. The sunset was really tremendous. Hues of orange, red, even a little purple. Red sky at night, sailors delight. Red sky in morning, sailors take warning. Bitch, were you a fucking shoreman in your past life, Mariah? Stop talking. So we can expect a sailor's delight tomorrow? That's awesome! We must have walked a few miles today. Gorgeous sights, you could even see snow on the tips of the mountains. That rumble sounded like a dying calf. You look from person to person trying to determine who it was. So someone's out here hungry as hell? It was definitely Mariah. Oh, Mariah. Mariah, I'd recognize that sound. Gah! Guilty. Mariah looks embarrassed, but the group laughs at her honesty. Except for you. You search your mind for something to say, but all you can think of is an old riddle. Those who have it do not want it. Those who have it least succeed. Those who have it for too long perish. Huh. When you feed it, it gets smaller. What am I? Hmm. Yeah, put that fucking brain to work. Uh, dust? Try again, big guy. Everyone is pondering the answer. Mariah's face lights up. I got it. Is it hunger? I was not expecting that. Yeah, I was gonna guess that. Okay, Corinne, I'm sure you were. So, uh, what's on the menu? Bread and jam. You crush the berries in your small mortar. All right, man, let's... Yay, that was easy. You cooked raspberry jam and bread. Huh? The bread's a little tough. Gregor, don't look a gift horse in the mouth. Mariah, are you okay? But this homemade jam is to die for. Sorry. Haha. <laughs> no, you're right, Gregor. This bread stinks. Mariah! Mariah! Everybody laughs. <laughs> funny, funny. You're not sure this could be called a meal, but it got the job done. Everyone thanks you for dinner. I'm gonna starve one of these people, I think, by accident. You go to bed wishing you had more. You have a strange dream. Something is riding on your back. <laughs> is it Gregor, dude? And it's becoming a nuisance. You try to see it in the mirror, but you can't get a good look at it. You try almost everything, but it won't get off. The pain between your shoulder blades is getting worse by the minutes. You wander away from the cabin, stumbling by river to soak your pain in the cool water. You didn't want things to come to this, but you've exhausted all your other options. You swim out to the middle. Rocks on the bottom cut your feet. You slip and fall to your knees. You lean back, trying to submerge the thing beneath the water. But it won't drown. It won't drown. It won't drown. So we got a fish chilling on the back. You splash frantically, plunging your head beneath the water, out of the water, beneath the water. The current takes you downstream. You try swimming to the shore, but it's no use. Water fills your mouth and nostrils. After a minute, you stop struggling against the current. As you gaze up at the sky, you feel it leaving your back, drifting into the sky as you sink to the bottom. And as you take your last gasp, <gasps> You look, and you see what was on your back staring into your eye. But you don't even have the air in your lungs to scream. You wake up in a cold sweat. 
Who the fuck was that? All right, day three, man. Okay, 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 okay. Just a dream. Hey, man, wake up. Sorry, you were making strange noises in your sleep. All right, hey, Mariah, what's up? What's going on, Gregor? Did the lightning wake you up? Hey, little guy. Hey, Simon. This guy reminds me of Simon. It woke me up. Try to fall back asleep, but it's so loud. Ugh. Let's just get back to sleep and talk about this in the morning. Everyone nods in agreement and gets back to bed. All right. Sorry for waking everybody up, man. I really do. I really do apologize. I didn't mean to. What? Except for you. You can't fall back asleep. You still have goosebumps from the nightmare. Huh. Corinne's snoring is louder than a sawmill. You find it very loud and distracting. You don't sleep a wink. Everyone is now up and awake in the cabin. You hear the front door open and quickly slam shut. And Natalie sounds petrified. What is going on? Hey guys, hey Natalie, hey Mariah. I looked out the door and we're completely surrounded by flood water. Looks like sailor's take warning was more appropriate for today. Oh no, maybe it'll clear up tomorrow. Nah. You can't steal big guy's optimism, Karen. Why the hell not? That's all he has going for him. Ah! He's also good at chopping wood though. <laughs> Knock it off, you two. Mariah. Do you think it'll clear up tomorrow? I give it a 27% chance of clearing up tomorrow. Based on what? I was bored stiff, so I read a book on local precipitation levels for the last 20 years in the living room. Oh, that makes a lot of sense. Sounds like you're stealing Anatoly's thunder. Anatoly, you're a book nerd, right? Why didn't you read it? Ugh, couldn't make it past the cover. Is that right? Yes. Why are you getting on him for not reading a book that was just randomly in the fucking library? Getting on him for nothing, hater Karen. Karen. Mariah. That bookshelf has some great books on artisan crafting and natural sciences. Why not let them sit there gathering dust? How did you arrive at the 27% chance of it clearing up? It's easy. Take the time of year, multiply it by a factor of... Okay, so the first thing you need to understand... Okay, all right, Mariah. Get on with it. And Natalie, maybe you could put this in the layman's terms for one of us, please. He's listening intently. Well, that's good for him. So intently, he hasn't blinked. The kid's a fucking robot, if I had to guess. You can see his eyes drying up. A tear rolls down one of his cheeks. And Natalie, bro, this is brutal to watch. Mariah finally wraps up her lecture. She ends with a bow. Nobody claps. Tough crowd. Mariah, that was awe-inspiring. You lost me a few minutes in, but that's okay. I didn't understand a word of it. <laughs> Gah! And Natalie turns to you. Anyway, there's no telling how long this will last. We can't leave the cabin until these floodwaters stop. I know our food situation is a little tight, but I know you'll make the right decision. I believe in you. Dot, dot, dot. Me too. Mariah... It looks like we have enough leftover berries for more bread and raspberry jam. I'll pass on the jam. Just give me more bread. Ha ha ha. Everybody laughs except for me. With everyone stranded in the cabin, you need to keep everyone fed and happy. You sneak out to the kitchen while everyone's still talking. Am I going to have to like kill some of these little chompettes? Or maybe kill one of our little friends? With the kitchen to yourself, you decide to check on the chompettes. All right, let's see what they're doing. Hey guys! Hi! Don't worry, as leader of the Chompettes, I'll make sure none of the humans know he'd eat me like an apple. Potato's still not talking, ha ha ha! Are your plans going awry? Bread that was not funny. Got another cornbread classic. Oh my gosh. Anyway, don't even think of eating us if you're hungry. Wow, Cabbage knew. She knew exactly what I was thinking. Chompettes stick together through thick and thin. Rain or shine, feast and famine. Potato. I swear to God. Repeat the line or we're locking you up again. 
Life or death. That's right. Chompettes, move out. What is going on, dude? The Chompettes somehow managed to close the drawer. You bring the crusty drawer. All right, man, let's eat, dude. Fuck it, I'm hungry. I'm hungry as hell. Are y'all eating something right now? Because first of all, eat transfer it through the screen because I'm a little hungry as well. Second of all, what? Corinne interrupts you to bring the food. It took you long enough. Looks at the two slices of bread and the mason jar. There's mold on these last two slices. Man, well, who's getting the mold pieces, huh? Not, no, it, it can't be Mariah. Mariah's been through enough and she's so small. What the hell is the matter with you? You grip the knife tightly in your hand. You think this is enough for five of us? Wait, we can't throw this bread away. It's all we have left. Gregor's right. And Natalie, will mold spores give us food poisoning? I'm, um, no scientist. Sorry. Hmm. Let's pick off as much mold as we can. We can't leave the floodwaters, so this will have to last another day. Everyone grimly nods, ripping apart their piece like a pack of wolves. Gregor seems to unhinge his jaw and eat it in one bite, like a fucking animatronic in 1987. Dude. <laughs> All right. He looks like a duck eating bread. Thanks again. Bread and jam isn't much of a meal, but it's more than we had when we left Ukraine. Huh? Wait, so did we leave Ukraine and we're just like in the middle of the woods somewhere? Plenty of rainwater outside, so at least we won't die of hydration. Okay, that's good to know at least. But until this storm is over, nobody should leave the cabin. Should clear up if we just give it a chance. And Natalie, where are you getting this information? One of the books on the books. I don't want to hear it. I don't want to hear it. Little guy's been studying. I don't give a fuck. I'm serious. He pretends to read those books because he wants us to think he's smart, but I can tell he's just staring at the page, faking it. Are you serious, dude? This kid's pulling the long con. What do you think? Honestly, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know this dude and Natalie. Fuck it. Uh, Karen is correct. I'm trying to get and go with her, y'all. <laughs> You're funny. Uh, I keep pretending with those books, and Natalie. Brutal Karen. I found an old picture book in the living room, and Natalie. Let me know if you want it, small fry. <laughs> Karen! Karen smiles at you. I guess let's call it a day. Yeah, sure. Damn. I didn't even think about that. This dude's a liar? Everyone shuffles off. Six minutes later. I'm glad you called out a Natalie's bluff. You continue to impress. It's a shame a Natalie is sleeping in the same bedroom. I should have never let him be the one to share with me. But what if it was just me and you? Can't say. I legally cannot say. I'm sure we could study and squeeze in a few novels before bed. You nod. Well, we have to see if we can kick him out at some point, right? Oh, you'll have to tell me about that anatomization book on the bookshelf. Really cool pictures in there. Karen looks like she has a crush on you. Let me know if you're ever free for a lesson, okay? Bye, Karen. Fuck! Now we gotta get rid of this little motherfucker, Natalie. Karen walks away looking very happy. You are definitely sure Karen will remember that. Oh boy! You get ready for bed and put a blanket on. You go to sleep very hungry. Okay. Day. Man, I'm thinking we're gonna get to the point where we might have to eat a motherfucker. You don't dream the entire night, but you sleep through everyone waking up. Well, that's good. We don't have to see. Wow, you look so happy this morning. Uh, Karen, that doesn't happen usually. Mariah, and that's how fast a deer could run if startled. Wow, Mariah. Mariah's a little fucking encyclopedia. Incredible. Impressive. Mm. 
I wish we had a deer here. With the food getting lower, let's just skip today's meal. Huh? <sighs> no. It's only for one day. Various cultures and religions have practiced fasting throughout history. That doesn't make us feel any better. And Natalie? What options do we have? Our food wasn't rationed properly. Hey, get fucking lost, Trump! It's not my fault! And Natalie leaves mumbling to himself. So passive-aggressive of him. Yeah, come we're eating him first if we get to eat. Everyone goes to a separate area. Corinne in the bedroom, Gregor in the living room, and Mariah in the kitchen. And then Natalie in the bathroom, probably fucking himself. Who do you want to speak to? Hmm, let me think with two brain cells in my head. Karen, dude. Oh man, I don't want to talk to... Looks like she's just slicing away at a block of wood. Oh, so sorry to bother you, Karen. Hey. Can I let you in on a secret? Yeah. I've actually enjoyed your cooking so far. The others expect me to be rude and mean, so I have to keep that reputation up, right? Can't have anyone thinking I'm saw. You're not sure where this is coming from. Promise me you'll give me some cooking lessons soon, okay? Okay, she's not ready yet, but you nod politely. Thank you. You're definitely sure Karen will remember that. All right, Karen. Yay! Okay, do your thing with your knife. Maybe she's making me a toy or something. I don't know what kind of toy. Everyone looks pretty down this evening. Yeah, and pretty hungry, too. I wish the rain would just stop. You're all doing great. We must be almost at the end of this nightmare. I'm so hungry. Me too. You are too. You wish everyone a good night and get ready for bed. Okay. Good night. Man, dude, I wish I had like maybe like a little sneak like packet of food or something. Huh? You go to bed with a growling stomach. Damn. Like a little sleeve of Ritz crackers or something. Something to keep private. You have a strange dream. A boy is yelling at you in the kitchen. You keep telling him to lie down on the tray, but he keeps shaking his head, calling you names. So you do it. You lie down on the tray and make your body as flat as a board. You show him how it's done. His anger turns to courage, and he pushes you into the oven. As the stench of burning hair fills your lungs, you see him sneering back at you. You wake up in a cold sweat! <laughs> Oh my, I like, we knew they were going to do it again, but we let them do it to us again. Why do we let them? I don't know. I'm telling y'all, I think that might be like a premonition because we are 100% going to have to eat somebody, right? That's where they're taking us to. Their stomachs must have kept them awake all night. Yeah, everybody's still asleep. The rain is still pouring outside. You can barely make out the trees from the windows. Oh, you hear a stirring of blankets, arms and legs. Please be somebody fucking cool. Mariah looks petrified. Hey, Mariah. I couldn't sleep. And Natalie has bags under his eyes. Hey, Natalie. This storm is too loud. Corinne looks out of it. Oh my, Corinne, what are you doing in there? The cabin was creaking so much last night. It sounded alive. Gregor looks a little gaunt. <laughs> yeah, he does. I got a good look out the window. And? Couldn't see anything due to the rain. Great observation, Gregor. Really good. I was so hungry last night. I kept pacing around my bed. Corinne turns to you. When is this going to end? I checked outside the door again. Floodwaters keep rising. Unfortunately, we're going to need to stay put unless one of us wants to drown in rainwater. As soon as the weather lets up, we'll be able to scavenge for supplies. How close is the nearest town? Um, um, yeah, this guy is fucking, he doesn't know shit. I don't know. Didn't you have a map on you? I think I dropped it while we were running after Gregor. 
I'm gonna have to kill you now, buddy. Your fate is sealed now, buddy. It really is. Cause it's his fault we're stuck in the middle of nowhere now. Now we don't have a map. I'm sure it'll show up. Ha ha ha. Maria and Natalie go white as a sheet. How are we gonna find our way back now? Well, um, have to ride out the storm. Mariah looks at you. We're down to our last slice of bread. I don't know how much longer we can put off eating. The group stares at you. It will clear up in no time. Maybe you're right. The group looks worried. They all gravitate to an area. Okay, well, are they gonna ask me to go somewhere again? You can tell Gregor's putting on a fake optimism. Mariah's so hungry she's about to die. Which one do you want to speak with? Ah! Dude, I don't give a fuck about Gregor. She's hungry. We're gonna try to maybe give her the last piece of bread. You- I'm getting that Suki flashbacks with Mariah here. It's cold as hell over here. I'm surprised Gregor isn't freezing to death all night. How does he do it? You explain to Mariah how the size of a person and, a, and the fat content determine how warm they are. Yeah, wish I was as big as Gregor. But to be honest, I don't need to be that tall to make a difference in the world. Oh, Mariah, that's sweet. Do you know what he wanted to do for a career? Mariah does her best Gregor impression. Split firewood and gaze at the stars. How boring is that? Mariah depends on the person, but pretty boring. You're so funny. Thanks for coming in and chatting with me. Mariah blushes a little. You make it easier to pass the time. Thank you. You're pretty sure Mariah will remember that. Okay, well, you can't help but feel bad, you know? You thank her and leave the bedroom. Bye, Mariah. Like, I care that she likes me, but I don't like her, you know? Well, I like her, but come on, y'all. Corinne is right there. You call everyone together. They all look pretty grim. You could cut the tension in the room with a knife. Everyone's staring at you. They're expecting that last piece of bread. Guess we're splitting it five ways. You bring it out. Everyone cannot take their eyes off it. You instruct everyone to take a pinch and slowly all five of you tear it apart like a wishbone. Everyone studies their piece of bread carefully, wondering how long it will last. Corinne is just the first to eat hers. She chews each bite 100 times before swallowing. And Natalie chews it cautiously, opening his mouth once he finishes each bite. Mariah nibbles on it silently, eyes wide moving person to person. And Gregor? Gregor just pops it in his mouth like a cherry. One bite and it's done for him. All right, well, it was gone in an instant. The group thanks you awkwardly. It's not much, but you've run out of options. You wish everyone good night and get ready for bed and you go to bed starving. Tell me I got a piece too, right? Because if I didn't get a piece, someone else is dying. Good morning. Hello, morning. Let me check if the rain has stopped. I mean, you can just listen and you can tell that it's not. It's still flooding. <laughs> what are we gonna do? Humans can live about two to three weeks without food. Water isn't a concern. Rainfall should end in a day or two, right? Actually, precipitation can occur for more than 215 days a year here. But do you really think it'll rain that long? And Natalie, it's been days already. What makes you think it'll stop soon? Ugh. Relax, everyone. Let's see how long we can ride this out. Fingers crossed it's done by tomorrow. Dude, I'm getting fucking hungry just thinking about it. Panic is creeping in. Everyone's looking scared, but you need to survive. So what am I going to do now? Karen and Gregor both discuss different options. Do you want to speak with Mariah or a Natalie? Think instead about how everything you've done is wrong and how you've doomed everybody. I don't want to talk to a Natalie right now, so whatever. Could this have been done differently if I rationed the supplies? 
No. Dude, we made enough for each person with the recipe that we were given and the supplies that we had. I don't want them blaming this on me. If anybody's fault, it's fucking a Natalie. You crunch the numbers one more time. You could have reduced the amount of vegetables used in the stew, but it was their first day. You had to impress them. Yeah, man. Come on. And we didn't know there was going to be a crisis. Probably not. Mariah and Natalie, Gregor, Karen. You wonder if they're upset with you. Um, I'm more upset with a Natalie right now because this guy keeps number one, fumbling the bag and number two, lying. I don't think he's as smart as he says he is. I don't think any of us can take this much longer. Gregor's voice starts to crack. I don't want to ask this, but it, it's time. Time for what, dude? One of us needs to go outside and search for food. Everyone is silent. I'll go. Hell no! M Mariah, I'm gonna stand up and stop you. I used to swim all the time near my house, so I probably have the best chance of swimming through the floodwaters. No, 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 no. No. Let me go instead. Yeah, good idea. You won't get very far if anything happens to your glasses. You're blind as a mole rat, remember? That's true, but... Little guy, let me go. Gregor, I... Sounds good to me. Karen! His arms are definitely the longest. Yeah, exactly. He can climb trees. He's a big guy. You would get... Mariah, you would get swept up in the damn storm. We need to find food or help. Gregor grabs a branch from the wood pile. He cuts it in different measurements. Since we can't come to a consensus... Let's draw? Are you fucking kidding me? Right now. We're gonna draw. It needs to be a majority vote and send the big guy outside. You're not worried about drawing. You saw Gregor cut the branch lengths so you can tell which is the biggest. You pick it. Will it be Gregor? A Natalie? Karen? Will it be... Looks like I've got the shortest. Mariah, I'm gonna say this right now. Do not leave this damn cabin. Mariah, Mariah, it's okay. Mariah! I watched the Natalie forge earlier. So I'll know what to look out for. Just swim until you find higher ground, then scout the area. Maybe you'll find a fish out there. Everyone looks heartbroken. Yeah, cause you're sending a woman to die! You should send the man out there! <sighs> Karen. Natalie? Gregor? I'll keep us alive. I promise. She promised. Everyone watches as Mariah leaves the cabin. The silence is deafening. Goodbye. Mariah, wait! <sighs> the door shuts. You can faintly hear her yell about how cold the water is and then silence we are never gonna see mariah again just letting you know right now karen i'm sure we'll see her again no karen did you not just hear what i just said the rest of the group nods everyone stays up waiting and waiting the sun is completely set one by one, each person quietly shuffles off the bed. You get ready for bed and easily pass out. Why does that achievement say dead to me? You have a strange dream. The two women in front of you could be twins. One of them you recognize, the other is a guest. You ask the guest to sit on a shovel and then you try pushing it into the oven. Oh, her legs are so strong, you can't get her into the oven. You curse at her repeatedly, like this, you hiss. 
You stretch out your legs until your toes are almost sticking in the coals. You feel four hands on your shoulders and both of them push you in. The familiar smell of smoke and burning hair caused you to throw up on the embers. You can't let it end like this. You rip the metal door off the oven, tearing the wood logs off the cabin. Screaming, you chase the two through the woods. You burn chill with the wind. The guest looks behind her and her eyes widen when she sees you. She's terrified. Your fury rips the trees out beneath their roots, soil from the ground, rocks from their pits. You've never been this angry in your entire life. The stamina can't last forever. You're gaining on them. And as you trample through the field of wheat, the guest throws a piece of cloth behind her. You catch the glint of it in the sun, golden. And as if by magic, the earth splits in front of you, creating a chasm of fire below. You fall into the pit, screaming as your eyes begin to sizzle from the heat. So she opened up a gateway to hell. Hell fire fills your lungs. You're unable to scream anymore. You wake up in a cold sweat. All right, yeah, we knew that one was coming. So it didn't get us. We've been a week in the cabin, a week, and we've eaten three meals. Is today the day someone gets eaten? You, little guy? Cause you know who's gone, right? Gregor says, good morning. Do you think she made it to higher ground? I believe in Mariah. While he's shedding tears. Me too. She'll be fine. Right, little guy? So what do we do now? Just wait? Corinne, how long? It's been almost a day since she left. And Natalie and Gregor look nervous. Someone needs to go look for her. We need to wait, Karen. How about you just go out there and look for her, big guy? Wait for what? The nearest town is miles and miles away. Waiting is all we can do for now. So it could be days before she gets back? What are we supposed to eat, mice? Karen, I'm sure and Natalie will agree, but we'll discuss next options when we get to it. Every waking thought is just about food now. I never should have eaten that much. It's okay, man. You're a big guy. I get it. You know, I get it. I'm... I'm... Karen's hands are involuntarily shaking. Gregor and Natalie just nod in agreement. They don't even need her to elaborate. Yeah, we know how hungry we all are. You're sure Mariah will make it back? No, not too sure. She promised. Well, she's also like a five foot three, 120 pound girl in a, in a flood. Just, can we finally get some fucking action? Because if Mariah's gone, then we've only got one option left. Hey, you don't have to lie to me. I know Mariah's not coming back. I don't know where she came up with her being the best swimmer. I guess the only one that would know that would be a Natalie. Last summer, a Natalie would watch her swim from the shore. He could have been a lifeguard, such a good swimmer. Well, then why didn't he go out there? Karen, she never went under, but if she did, he would have pulled her out easily. Why would she lie about something like that? I don't know, maybe because either she liked that little motherfucker, she liked me a lot, she didn't want him to get hurt, she didn't want, I don't know, maybe she knew that we're gonna end up HOPEFULLY EATING THAT LITTLE MOTHERFUCKER! Karen seems deep in thought. Maybe it's better to leave her alone. You close the door softly. Damn, so she's in here thinking about Mariah. <sighs> I've been too, don't get me wrong, I've been too. Dot dot dot, dot dot dot, dot dot dot. I can't stop thinking about that vegetable stew. I'd be fine with the bread and jam. I'd be fine with just the strawberries. <laughs> Nobody else laughs. I would kill for some vegetables right now. So would I, man. So would I. I'm gonna try and get some sleep. Good night. Night. Man, hey, someone's gonna go on a fucking rampage this whole night. You fell asleep quickly, but you only dream about desecrating a corpse? 
you wake up in a cold sweat in a completely different room. Okay, well, no little jump scare image, but we're desecrating a corpse? What does that mean? Does that mean we're shitting on it? I think that's what that means. Hi, Corinne. Good morning. Corinne's looking worse. Will you cook for the group today? Ah, uh, looks like I have no other choice. You take out a cutlet of meats and begin to cook it in the oven. Where the fuck have we been hiding all this meat? You cooked meat. Huh? Karen? Where did you get that? You ignore Karen's question. What's that smell? Gregor finally gets off the couch. Where did you? The three are looking at you, salivating. You take the charred meat out of the oven, cutting it into small cutlets. Uh, they immediately grab some off the plate, chewing ferociously. You take a piece and immediately devour it. Do you have any more? this. You explain how the meat is stored securely, hidden, so you can ration better this time. Where did we get this? I understand. Thank you. A Natalie runs to the bathroom, puking in the toilet. You can hear him sobbing for a few minutes. <laughs> That's what I think he probably sounds like. <laughs> this taste is... is... Gregor wanders off. And Natalie returns, looking choked up. I was too weak. I left you some of the meat. Don't fight this, Natalie. Mm -hmm. And Natalie takes a cutlet from the plate, turning his back to the group as he devours it. Nom, 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 nom. You can hear him crying. <laughs> Finally, my focus is coming back. Going to read some of those books. Keep them occupied, okay? Karen leaves you with the men. Who do you want to talk to? You know what? I think I'll talk with my little buddy and that anomaly. You knock on the door first. Knock, knock, knock. Motherfucker. Uh, Natalie, you slowly open the door. Hey, buddy. Thanks for checking in on me. You ask if he still feels sick. No, 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 not anymore. I think it was a mental thing. Yeah, please don't tell me where the meat came from. <laughs> Less known, the better. You nod. Thank you. I know he will. Hours past the meal everyone gave. Was that thing opened originally? Eating will just make them hungrier they're fine now but soon they'll be begging for more hey karen hey buddy hey big guy we've waited long enough what's for dinner you calmly explain that you want to ration the meat better this time and there will be no dinner fine i understand i guess i'd rather eat tomorrow than today no arguments perfect go to bed you two you three you two karen you can come back Karen, everyone decides to call it an early night. You fall asleep instantly tonight. Well, that's good. Hopefully no horrible f Okay, strange dream. You're having dinner with a blacksmith, but he's not touching his food. The only light in the room comes from the oven. He clears his throat, stroking his beard. <clears throat> I can forge anything, he says. Your eye's been giving you some issues lately, so you reply... Forge me a new eye, then. You laugh. <laughs> but then the ropes come out. He ties you to a chair with a long rope to prevent you from struggling. You rip the rope apart without even trying, so the blacksmith uses a thicker rope. No turning back now. He takes a hot poker out of the coals, holding it in front of his face. You can see his beard and eyes watching you. He slowly brings back the poker, aiming carefully for your eyes before plunging it into your skull with a sickening crunch. 
The force of the blow throws you backwards a few feet. You're unable to break the ropes. You vomit all over your chest. As the smell of your disseminated eye floods your nostrils, the blacksmith stands over you, spitting on your body. You wake in a cold sweat. Okay, dude, back up, man, back up. We should have never said the whole forged eye comment, okay? That was our fault. You wake up to see Gregor looking out the window. He turns to me, not smiling. Take a look out the window. Do you notice anything? Um. The who? The floodwaters have receded, but everyone is still bound to the cabin. I'm trying to like, look and see if I see any dead bodies. The trail used to be completely visible. It's gone now. Yeah, it is. And you know who else is gone? Have we all forgotten about our dear friend? I guess so. Good morning, big guy. Will Mariah make it back? Oh. This might sound a little crazy, but every night around 2 a.m., I can hear her outside. She makes this awful gurgling noise like she's trying to get water out of her lungs. Have you heard her too, Gregor? Sometimes, when the rain gets faint, I think I can hear her whispering. I haven't heard anything like that. When she's whispering, it's like she's trying to tell you something. Right? <laughs> yes! I sometimes hear her cry through the radio, but that's just a broadcast, right? Right, Karen, right? And Natalie, I think we should have another piece of meat for breakfast. One step closer to Mariah! It's what she would have wanted. It's gotten into you, Natalie. And Natalie's eyes look at you begging, bring us another slab he clearly doesn't have the stomach for it i can't get the taste out of my mouth please help me uh, natalie gregor looks pained at natalie's words i think he's right please bring us more of that meat you grab some of the meat from your secret hiding place you cut it into squares adding it to the boiling cauldron water it will taste bland without any seasoning but you need to serve it up right away Mmm. -hmm. What's taking so long? Boil it faster! It looks almost done. Patience. It's finally finished. You serve the meat in bowls. One bowl for each. Mmm. Gregor drinks the broth first before swallowing the chunks whole, like a duck does when eating bread. And Natalie Creech creates ripples in the broth using the spoon he isn't eating. I'm sorry about earlier, everyone. I... I don't know what overtook me. M mariah And Natalie begins to weep. <laughs> you look over at Corinne. You didn't notice her even start to eat. There's just an empty bowl now. Damn, she was hungry as fuck. <laughs> Okay, oh, whoa, 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 Corinne. Corinne is staring right at you. What? How much more meat is left? You explain how most of it has gone bad. This is the last of it. Ugh! How could you be so careless again? You remember Karen's knife. You need to think fast. What the hell are we supposed to do now? Wait around again? The storm isn't ending. You clear your throat. <clears> throat> um, and Natalie? Yes? Whew. I think tomorrow you should look for Mariah. Okay? Buddy? Or forage for plants outside. Okay? One or the other. I think you should go tomorrow, little guy. That's what I'm saying, Gregor. 
Nobody else can identify edible plants like you. I... I... Please, Anatoly. You can swim back after a few hours. And... Gregor's right, Anatoly. Maybe you'll find Mariah out there. I think Mariah's fine by herself. He still hasn't accepted what happened yet. That or he doesn't know a fucking raspberry from a blueberry, motherfucker. She doesn't need anyone's help. But when we need your help, Anatoly. That's right, Anatoly. But we need your help. Help us, man. Let me sleep on it, okay? Okay. No problem, little guy. <laughs> All right, good night. Oh my gosh, gotta sleep on it. Head out now. Everyone shuffles off to their rooms, reading books and knitting to pass the time. You go to bed ravenous. Damn. Mariah? I don't know. I really don't know what she's talking about. Something is approaching. Onion? Onion? Hey, Onion. <laughs> Don't be a crybaby. It's just me, Onion. Not gonna be very sweet today. I'm worried about a Natalie. He's going to cave to peer pressure. Can you stop him from leaving the cabin? You don't answer, Onion, because he's an idiot. <laughs> Please. Don't you trust me? You shake your head. Hell no, little dude. Got a fun factoid for you. Did you know that leaving out an unpeeled onion in your room absorbs bacteria? It will help prevent colds and ward off viruses. Onion. That was a lie, you motherfucker. The fun factoid of that myth, people actually believed it in the 1500s. How embarrassing. Who would believe that? <laughs> there was even a doctor in 1919 who caused a surge of people believing it. <laughs> anyway, you know what smells like a raw onion left in a room? Boy, boy. Me. Got it. It's been a while since your last bath. You can't remember. Could smell you before I even came into the room. Yikes. So just, can you stop anatomy from leaving? I know he has cabin fever, but this is ridiculous. It will be impossible to stop a grown man from leaving. Please. We don't need another stalking the hallways. Tapping on the windows, crying through the radio. You have the sudden urge to scream. Why do you think I've been using the mouse holes to get around? I didn't know you were doing that. Dude, scared to death, I'll run into her. Are we talking about Mariah? Don't make me tattle the cabbage about you. She could be as mean as potato. Onion, onion. Just kidding, she's great. Anyway, when the time comes, tell Natalie you care about him and don't want him to leave. Fuck that, fuck that. No, 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 go away, bitch, later. No way, no way, uh-uh. He's going out, he's looking for Mariah, she's coming back and we're chilling. I like that plan. Your mind finally manages to forget everything that happened. You fall asleep again, still ravenous. Damn, bro. We're on day fucking 10. You have a strange dream. A fox is collecting payment. You despise him, so you put two dogs and then add six chickens. At some point, the fox will eventually open the sack and the dogs tear the fox in half. Filled with such loathing, you gave him the only things you had for food, all those chickens. As the snow piles up, you begin to eat whatever you can find, pillowcases, leather. One day you wake up and you have nothing to eat, nothing. Just an insatiable hunger. A few days later, you go mad and leave the cabin completely ravenous. A nearby tree looks like charred meat. Your iron teeth cut through the sharp bark, tearing your guns apart by the splinters. Your mouth quickly fills with blood. Days later, a deer gallops by, the first creature in the woods to see your corpse. You wake in a cold sweat. Okay. Okay. I was half expecting a little BOOM shit, but not this time. Something smells terrible in the living room. Someone puked in a corner. 
You wipe it up with a rag to save them the embarrassment. Well, that was nice of me. All right, buddy, who's ready to go outside now? Good morning. Nobody cares. What's your decision? I barely slept. Her whispers came through the hole. She had to come, tell me to come outside. We don't want to rush you, but one of us puked. I bet it was him, honestly. You have one hour. Why so quickly? Because I'm not waiting any longer. <laughs> you can see the glint of Karen's knife under her dress. Damn, bitch. Watch out for that knife. I'm telling y'all, Karen is full cuckoo crazy. Full cuckoo crazy. The group disperses. You have one hour to kill. What do you want to do? I'm not talking to a Natalie. I'm sorry. I'm going to go talk to Karen again. We're going to get the full heart meter. I don't know what happens, but fuck it. Hi. Keep this between us. I'm not giving a Natalie a choice today. He's going outside. Do I make myself clear? Yeah. I think we're on the same page here, Karen. Good. Thank you for understanding. Oh! Karen cracked a smile. Yay. Yay! Now let's get everyone together for a meeting and let's get him to leave. Yes! A Natalie? You okay, little guy? And Natalie looks pale like he's gonna pass out. Have you made a decision? Yes. I'll help you all out. I promise. Thank you, Natalie. Big tears roll down Gregor's cheeks. I'll miss you, big guy. I'll miss you, little guy. <laughs> Thank you, Natalie. I know this wasn't easy, but it's for the best. Bye! Karen? Yes? I... Gregor looks at me expectantly. Did you want to say anything? Oh. Did you want to say anything to a Natalie? You say nothing. Later! <laughs> uh, I... Goodbye, Natalie. Goodbye, everyone. Good luck, little guy. See you soon, little guy. Hmm. I guess all we can do now is wait. Good night. Karen goes to the bedroom to sleep. I... I didn't tell him the truth. Gregor is getting choked up. I didn't tell him missing him already. Gregor curls up on the couch for the night, turning his back to you. I'm starting to think they were like... I kind of feel bad. I feel bad for Gregor. Not for that little motherfucker. You shut your eyes, quickly falling asleep. You hear a scraping from the floor. Um. <laughs> fucking bread. Ha ha. No laughing matter. I'm worried about Gregor. What's the root of that? Oh, no, another fuck. More jokes? I'm gonna skip through this shit. Watch out for that knife and protect Gregor. Understood? You're fooling nobody with that act. You've never had hearing loss. Let's go with a nonverbal answer, all right? Protect Gregor. All right, sure. <sighs> okay, fine, but I'm not gonna do <sighs> I'm not actually gonna do it. <laughs> it's the yeast you can do. Shut up. Go away, Brad. <laughs> Shut up! Brad hops away, squeezing himself through the mouse hole. You fall asleep thinking about what Brad told you. Um, if something happens, I'm gonna, I'm not gonna interfere because she's probably gonna try to kill him to get more food for us. You have a strange dream. It's lying on the table in front of you. You take off the glasses first, partially cracked, and set them down next to the workbench. Working the saw, you wrap the cuts in the old newspaper. Some of it gets soggy immediately. Much better. You hear something approaching, so you clench a fist. You wake in a cold sweat. 
my glasses. So was that supposed to be a Natalie? Was that? Hi, Mariah. I can hear you. You wake up in a completely different place. Did you sleepwalk or? More meat. Yay. Everybody's still asleep. Where did we get? But I thought we ran out. This would be a nice surprise. You decide to cook breakfast. Cutting each slice fairly thin, you brown each side in the oven. The smell is unique. Oh, Karen runs into the kitchen. Hey, Karen. Wow, what is that smell? Karen grabs the cutlet, burning her hands before bringing it to her mouth. Ah! She hungrily devours it, barely chewing. She grabs another cutlet off the plate and eats it. You thought she was concerned with rationing. Gregor wakes up from the couch and heads into the kitchen. Did she eat everything? Uh Oh God, already? Gregor looks conflicted, but he succumbs to the hunger. They always do. Gregor eats his food in a few bites, carefully grabbing a second cutlet. The tears start streaming down his face, but he doesn't make a sound. Already? Are we eating that little fucking nerd? Or is, I don't know what he's mad about. You join them in the meal, quickly consuming the meat. I can think straight again. We'll be out of here in no time. No need to ration. Karen is sounding more determined than ever. I'm gonna lie down on the couch. Try to keep this food down. Gregor ca crawls onto the couch. Yeah, so it's funny how you magically get more food once people start disappearing and there's less people to feed. I'm glad Mariah and Anatoly are gone. And Natalie, they were stopping us from bonding properly. How did you get so good at it? You tell Karen. After one bite, it just made me feel whole again. Even with the nightmares, it's worth it. It took a few nights, but I fought back. And now it's all I can think about. I read the book on necropsy. The text is atrient, but the diagrams are beautifully drawn. Necropsy? Isn't that like necrophilia? Where you're like... Doing it with dead people? How many years did it take you to perfect the craft? You tell her. Yeah, right. I used to tell Mariah that you weren't funny, but that's not true. Sorry about that. You've grown on me. Karen pauses deep in thought. You know Gregor can't swim, right? He'd be next to the leave, but he doesn't stand a chance outside. So that means who was going next? They always seem to come back, right? In one way or another. Yeah, we got Mariah coming through the floor and through the radio. Why wait for him to come back? Karen hands you a vial of liquid. I think you know what needs to be done. This is a strong anesthetic. Don't ask me how I found it. I want you to slip this into Gregor's mug. We're gonna make him go to sleep. We're gonna chop him up and then me and her are gonna live off human meat for the rest of our days. I'm calling it. This is for the best. He won't feel any pain until he wakes up. All you have to do is stand back and let me work on him. This request is beyond extreme. Will you do this for me? Yes, I will. I knew you would. Thank you. You nod. She's learning quickly. You definitely think Karen will remember that. I don't know what this means, but we have all five hearts. Karen? Karen hands you a vial of mysterious liquid. You add it to Gregor's mug. Gregor, it's been a while since you've had some water. Come drink with us. Oh no, oh. Uh, Gregor looks frightened. I can't stop thinking about the little guy. I can't even remember what happened before we arrived. It just never ends. I miss a Natalie and Mariah. Let us toast to a Natalie and Mariah. They'll always be inside of us, Gregor. I see what you did there. Can't change that now. Gregor begins to weep. <laughs> You're right. We're having it raw tonight, Gregor. What? Eating raw meat is one of life's greatest gambles. 
get awfully sick or... Gregor slowly puts the meat into his mouth, ignoring the smell. He swallows each bite with a wince on his face. Ah! Trying not to get sick. I'll never forget the first time I met Anatoly. We were kids chopping firewood outside the house. Anatoly brought over a butterfly net filled with them. He introduced himself and asked me if I wanted to hold one of his butterflies. I had never held one before. He told me not to crush it between my, quote, large paws. He did have miniature hands himself, so I get it. Anatoly. And. Karen? What did you put in this water? Would you do anything to save your friends, Gregor? Of course. Gregor's eyes start to droop. What the hell was Karen's liquid? I think it's best to have an early bedtime tonight. Let me help you onto the couch, Gregor. Wow. Yeah. Thank you, Karen. I... I... Gregor passes out cold. Thank you. I'll do the rest. Even if he screams, please ignore when Gregor wakes up. When he wakes up? So we're not gonna just kill him? Okay. You don't want to interrupt Karen with this? We're just gonna chop him? You leave her alone, going into the bedroom and crawling into the bed, and Natalie slept in, so we're in the same room with her now. You fall asleep almost instantly. Day damn 12. What the fuck? So she's keeping him alive? Wake up, sleepyhead. Oh, hi. You were having a nightmare. Yeah, what is that out there, Karen? Also, damn, Karen, we've been cuddling all night long? Thanks for letting me practice last night. I think I did a great job. Made us all some breakfast this morning to celebrate. Breakfast? With what? That's a surprise. <laughs> Gregor already finished his. Took a few hours, but he caved. Come on, let me show you. You get out of bed and head to the living room. Why? Why didn't we just kill him? He's a little weak from the blood loss. But don't worry. Bandaged him up like a field medic. My... What is it, Gregor? Where am I? Oh, you're so stupid. Maybe if you spent as much time reading books as chopping wood, you would have noticed the pages I was bookmarking in the necropathy book. What are you talking about? Do I have to spell it out for you? You can't swim. How are you supposed to help us when you'd immediately drown? You'd sink like a log? What? I put some of your limbs away for safekeeping. That leg was pretty tasty, huh? Gregor goes pale. How's that? For a big breakfast. <laughs> and don't even try to crawl away. If you leave this couch, I'll end you. <sighs> I don't want any of it to go bad, so we'll eat that fresh arm when everything else is gone. Oh my gosh. I understand now. Speaking of which, gonna start cooking. I'll leave you two alone. Hey. All I wanted to do was keep everyone alive and together, but I failed at that. Are you... are you disappointed in me? No, 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 no. I think you should have went out first, but whatever. That means a lot to me. Growing up, nobody had to tell me to be big and strong. It just happened naturally. My mother always made sure I never went hungry. Seconds, thirds, fourths, and yet I complained my belly was not full. One day, on my way home from school, 
I was walking by the town inn and smelled something amazing coming right out of a pile of trash. I dug through and discovered a bag they threw away a meal that was fresh out of the oven for some reason. At least, that's what I thought. I became ill with food poisoning, I hugged the toilet, cried for hours, my mother rubbed my back. I learned nothing from that experience, like everywhere else I was just here for the food. I'll never get this foul taste out of my mouth, she's gonna keep eating me. I'm sorry. Getting too lightheaded to hold a good conversation. <laughs> She's gonna torture me again. You know that, right? Gregor grows a little more pale. Can you cover me with a blanket? I've never been this cold. This cabin, it chills me to the bones. Or what's left of them. Please, consider it my dying wish. Yes. I feel like the biggest piece of fucking shit. Thank you. Much warmer now. Watch out for that knife. Okay? Gregor begins to look at peace. I... And... 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 You watch the last of Gregor's air. Escape his lungs. What the hell do you think you're doing? You tell Karen that Gregor gave up. He could have kept him alive for another week. What's wrong with you? Tch, no matter. Plenty of food left now. Karen leaves you alone. You head to the kitchen to try to find some of the other remains. Dude, it's just gonna be us now, Gregor. You look at the pile of dishes, your mind starts to wander. Hello. Let's play hide and seek! What the fuck? Trying to open up other damn websites and shit. What is this about, huh? What is this? Can you find all of us? The red-haired woman should know where the basement key is. She's whittling something in the rocking chair. Watch out for that knife. Wait. I... Isn't that your knife? Why did you let her have it? You shrug. I, um... I... As the leader of the Chipettes, it is important you find all of us, so don't forget anybody. Can't hurt to play with them. Okay, well, now we gotta talk to her. Looks like Karen's just slicing away at a block of wood. Hey! Gregor's remains have been stored for safekeeping. Scrubbed all the blood out of the couch to save you the trouble. Can I help you? Hey, have you seen the basement key anywhere? Wasn't it in the kitchen? You can't remember. I haven't seen the key. Maybe one of the chompettes can help you find it. All right, well, as long as she didn't shank us with the fucking knife while we were in there, I'm happy. Thankfully, where do you want to check? Uh, let's check in the damn cupboard. You open a few drawers, they're empty. They must have, okay, fuck it. The cauldron? Oh, it's in the oven, the key? Nothing but a big pile of ashes. You found the basement key. Ashes and the key in the oven. Okay, cool. That's the room where you found potato. Check behind the cauldron. Oh, shit. Okay. Let's go find Onion now. Onion. There he is. What's up, Onion? Wow, your breath stinks. Okay, all right, bro. Shut the fuck up. Show us where next. I'm not trying to listen to this guy fucking talk to me all night long. These little... Your face is feeling numb. Ah. Uh, your legs aren't moving. Ah. Uh, Oh well, you do some time breathing exercises. That seemed to help. What? What's going on? There's something in this bedroom. You feel a second wind coming on? Time to get that bread. You probably strut up to the living room happy to be alive. I don't know what the aura in that living room was, but bread? You hear bread. He's taking his sweet time. Bread! <laughs> Don't you love me? Oh my god. Are you starting to think of eating us? Guys, I'm not that hungry yet, okay? You accidentally lick your lips. Guys! Cabbage! <laughs> Snap out of it! Guys, I'm not... Okay, don't worry about it. <laughs> don't worry about it, Onion! Guys! 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 Am I about to pass out? Did they pass out?
Holy cow, get him up. So heavy. You stumble to your feet. Let's uh, go find Raspberry and never speak of this again. Okay, we've got three chompettes, two more to go. I've gone completely fucking numb. We're wiggling our toes. We didn't pass out. Where is she? Oh, you feel a chill running up your spine. Goosebumps are all over your body. She's here. The birds outside turn silent. You could hear a pin drop. You could almost hear her breathing. The raspberry? You feel the sudden urge to scream. You can't sneak up on me. Don't ever try that again. Yay! Everybody's here and they're gonna start talking about fucking stupid shit. Red haired woman. All four chopettes escape. You pretend to be studying the basement door. Yeah. You hear Karen creeping up. Hey, found you. You can see the knife out of the corner of Karen's dress. There it is. I didn't even see it down there. I don't know if I can wait any longer. Karen drops the knife to the floor, walking over and holding you in a loving embrace. I can't wait any longer to tell you that I love you. Karen looks into your eyes, laughing as she says it again. <laughs> I love you. For all the first time in ages, a genuine smile appears on your face. It was Karen all along. Your soulmate has finally been found. You create a new life together, devouring hundreds of men, women, and children. Laws and governments are powerless to stop your wrath. Your partnership is beautiful. All that oppose you perish. Karen helps you with butchering so your arthritis gets relief. You work together beautifully, making the world a terrible place for future generations. One day, Karen becomes ill. You try everything to prolong her life, but none of the methods work. My Karen! My Karen! Karen can no longer walk around the cabin. Her condition worsens, keeping her bound to the bed. You bring her borscht daily, but she can't even eat a bite without coughing. She isn't able to keep down fresh cuts of meat anymore. She is seriously ill. One day, she calls you over to her deathbed between gasps for air. Her eyes are filled with terror, but it lessens once she sees you. Hi. Hi. Karen tries to say your name, but can't get it all out. I... I love you. You nod, crying softly as she tightly grips your hand in fear. Your tears fall on her dress as the last of Karen's air leaves her lungs. Her hand slowly lets go of yours, dropping to the side. You take the knife and wrap her hands around it, putting it in the middle of her chest. Karen? Karen? <laughs> hey, y'all got me fucking tearing up over a murderous, cannibalous woman passing away. You were a true cooking companion. I'll tell you a story, but do you promise not to laugh? I almost died when I was six. It was probably the closest winter ever on record. My parents and I were snowed in. At first they had enough wood, but that ran out. My father, before their wedding day, he chopped down one of the biggest trees in the forest. He spent months whittling it down, cutting the pieces carefully, measuring the armrests so they fit perfectly, sanding it down so as to not even a splinter could come out. He named it Mother's Chair. 
And every Saturday, he washed her feet while she sat there. Damn, bro! Why am I crying? Whistling a tune, his grandmother taught him. Looking deep into her eyes as he rubbed her ankles, took him weeks of working on it in secret. He was hyperventilating while he dismantled it. Each heavy breath was a foggy cloud. His tears were freezing to his cheeks. The fire only lasted two days. And later, the frostbite turned his fingertips completely black. Oh. He had to burn the chair so they wouldn't freeze to death. He cried almost as hard over his fingers as he did the chair. After a while, when the food was running out, he began to search every inch of our cabin, but he finally found what he was looking for. A little mouse. Holding it, wiggling in his hands must have been powerful. Between wincing, he divided it into two. One piece for me, and one for my mother. How's that for a big breakfast? His corpse was the first I ever saw that was frozen solid. Thank you for listening. I was not expecting all of that from this. I'm going to keep it honest. I really was not. I thought, vocals by Yub? Wait, Yub is, wait, when did you? I was not expecting that to be such like a roller coaster and emotional journey. It was like a mini DDLC with the one crazy girl that we all had a crush on from the beginning. Guys, I'm getting too predictable. I hope you enjoyed that late night, super long episode of Zachville TV. Let me know what you think of like the little bubble up top and like no green screen behind. It's new, I'm just trying it. Secret double handshake. Thank you for making it all the way to the end of the video. That helps out way more than leaving a like or commenting. So you're a fucking legend. I appreciate it. Anyway, I'll see you tomorrow. Peace.